of April 2007, I just finished a night shift at the bar that I worked at in the centre of Bristol. My friend and I were driving home from when we passed what I can only describe as the worst car accident I've ever seen. What I saw that day will stay with me forever. A woman who died following a crash on the A4 has been named. It happened at the Three Lamps Junction yesterday morning. I'd be dreaming that people I knew were dying from car accidents. We went on holiday to Devon in the summer and I, I just felt like the whole holiday was spoiled for me because I spent the whole time worrying and thinking that every time we got in the car that something bad would happen. Struggling with PTSD as a result of witnessing the accident, Holly enlisted the help of the Speakmans to help her move forward with her life. So Holly, we'd like to know exactly how PTSD affects you. Nick and Eva so then like asked Holly if she would feel comfortable travelling back with them to the scene of the accident. I'd like to check how you're feeling. I'm feeling really on edge. I don't like it at all. I... If you were going to scale your discomfort 0 to 10, 0 being I'm perfectly happy and calm, 10 being I really don't want to go, where would you be right now? Uh, probably an, an 8 or a 9. An 8 or a 9. OK, that goes. So you really don't really want to go at all then, do you? We've just obviously tried to go back to the scene of the accident and clearly you can't go. Yeah. It instantly brings back the image to my head of um, what, what I saw. I thought there was a child involved. There was a baby seat in the middle of the road and a teddy. Um, we got out of the car and realised that it it wasn't a, a child. It was it was a torso um, of the lady that died. And even after I found out from the policeman that we wouldn't have been able to do anything, I. I carried a guilt for a long time, thinking that I should have done more and I could have done more. I hope that Holly meeting the Speakmans will uh, release her from the anxiety of being in a car um, with me or with anybody um, and just release her from that, that situation where she keeps going back to with this, this post-traumatic stress. To be able to move on, you need to be able to blame something. Yeah. So if you blame something, you say this was the cause, your brain will protect you from that. A car was involved in the accident, but what caused the accident? The driver. And why did he cause the accident? Because he was driving dangerously. Now, every time you go near a car, your unconscious goes, you need to keep away from that because that's going to be dangerous. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. If we can solve what happened that day, yeah. and you accept the solution, I like you can let it go. Yeah, that would be amazing. OK. Who caused that problem? Him. OK. Is it fair for you to blame cars? No. Ultimately, who makes the decisions when they're driving that car? It's the drivers. Absolutely. But the car was just as much a victim as that girl was. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that makes sense. How does that make you feel now? It makes me feel different. I, I feel like a sort of... a weight has been lifted. Good. So how do you feel coming in a car with us now? Well, I think I can do it. I think it would be OK. So I've been in the car about five minutes now. How do you feel? I feel okay. I, I'm surprised. I, my hands are not clammy. I, I'm not shaking. I, <laughs> You're laughing. Yeah, yeah You're laughing. I'm laughing. I, I laughing. am. I'm not very relaxed, to be honest. What does that tell you if you have no anxiety? There's nothing to be scared of. We're here at the scene of the accident. Tell us how you're feeling. I feel peaceful. I, although it's busy, I, I don't feel any anxiety or I don't feel scared. I... Yeah, obviously, it happened ten years ago, and, and it's like it never ended for you. Yeah. Does it feel now like you've actually got closure and yes. it's done? Yes, it does. I think I think I could be able to come past here now in our everyday lives. So, and what does that yeah. tell you? I'm cured. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Holly's uh, here now. What drew you to this case? Uh, do you know, as soon as we read her email asking for our help, the fact that she'd been so brave, she stopped in that moment to give help 
Um, but the consequence was that she was left with, with, with post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. But it was just so compelling. You know, she didn't even hesitate. She went, she went to give her help, she directed traffic, and she actually was a, a key witness as well. So. Were you surprised how quickly it worked? Yes, it was almost instant. It was like a switch had gone in my head. What was it that switched it? I don't know. It just, I think it just changed the way I sort of was looking at everything. How did you change it? The, the big component, and it's the same with anyone who has an issue with driving, is that if there's a crash involved, I mean, it was a horrific incident but in that moment you've got to make sense of it and what what's caused this and holly blame cars and gradually over the 10 years it's got worse and worse and worse to the point that she's not even driven a car for three years yeah. and she can't even walk on a busy street we were amazed that when we went to the site of um, afterwards that she actually admitted to us that even walking on the street so her life had really become quite small in the world you said you were existed before you were existing yeah. before you're living now That's what difference has it made to you I I feel like I can go out and do anything with my family, with my children. It's just made such a difference. And Ian, your partner, yeah. was quite surprised because you got into the car the other day and uh, no normally that would have been a major problem, but you got into the driving seat. Yeah, yeah, I've almost pulled him out. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, which has never happened. And so, so what do you think this will do for you now? What, what will you be able to do now that you couldn't oh, do before? Anything. I feel like I can do anything now. It's, it's great. I just feel like my life is back again. Well, we saw you as a passenger, but we haven't seen you as a driver, and you're going to do that now for yes. us. And so this is just the this is the next step. I suppose this is the final step. It's really. Yeah, it's just the confirmation that she's perfectly fine. You ready? Yeah. OK, jump in. I think we're going to go and do a bit of sightseeing around London. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we all actually hate pulling out of this part of the building anyway, so she'll do well to get out. Yeah. In you go. Thank you. Seat belt on, everyone's in, there's a camera in the car. Thanks, Holly. Enjoy. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys. See you later. And away she goes. It will take her about half an hour to get out of this. You've got to get the buses go. All the lorries carrying scenery, the taxis. Yeah, and no one's going to let her out because that's London after all. The great thing about her starting off in London traffic, of course, is that wherever she goes, she'll go incredibly slowly. And there she goes, pulling out of ITV, and she's on her way to a brand new life. They are extraordinary. Look what they can do.